Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Zion Williamson and his torn meniscus and his subsequent arthroscopy. These athletes, they put such a load on their body, their knees, their ankles, their hips. Yep. Injuries happen all the time. One specifically for him, he is such a big, agile guy with so much hype. It's just so uh, disappointing. He injured himself, what they think is three or four days ago. Originally, the, the Pelicans said that it wasn't a big deal. And then yesterday, all of a sudden, they said, hey, he had surgery and he's out for six to eight weeks. No big deal. No, no big deal. Especially no big deal for the Raptors who are going to be seeing them in their home opener tonight, which there is disappointing go. to all of those fans. So, Paul, let's talk about the injury itself. Uh, how, do you, how do you think this stuff happens? Okay, so well, what is a meniscus? A meniscus is, I like to call it a shock absorber inside the knee. And you can check out some of our other videos where we've gone into detail about the meniscus. We've shown you the meniscus, yep. what it looks like through an arthroscope. But it's basically a shock absorber, like a donut shaped shock absorber in the knee. Because if you imagine the femur is round and it's resting on a uh, flat surface of the tibia, so you need something to distribute that point stress, and that's what the meniscus does, like a little shock absorber, made of cartilage. Right, one on the inside of your knee, one on the outside of your knee, so a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus, um, and it's kind of shaped like a horseshoe if you looked at it from the top, thick on the outside, tapering it to be quite thin on the inside, and usually it's that thin inner margin that gets torn. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can have what's called a bucket handle tear or releases in the front and the back and flips over. We do not know his specific yeah. pathology. Yeah. Um, you call it a horseshoe. I would say donut. I think I'm going to change it to a donut with a bite taken out of it. Okay. Cause yeah, because it doesn't go all the way around. Right, right. Exactly. Donut with a bite taken out of it. A horseshoe. And so, Paul, how do these people present? Like, why, why do people need surgery for this potentially? Well, what happens is when the meniscus tears and it's flipping around in the joint, it causes what we call mechanical symptoms catching, locking, giving way. It can ache and hurt as well, but the main thing is the mechanical symptoms, that catching, locking, giving way. Yeah. Specifically when you do like a deep knee bend or a squat or a pivoting maneuver. You mean like he might do in basketball? I, I, I don't play a lot of basketball, but typically I've heard there's a lot of pivoting, squatting, and uh, jumping in well, basketball. Just like last year when you kind of pivoted out of his shoe that time. There you go. And, and who knows, maybe that was yeah. that, the moment where he tore his MCL, that yeah. maybe he aggravated a meniscus at the time, which is a commonly associated injury. It's possible. Something has to give, right? He got better shoes, and now his knee gave instead of the shoe. So usually when we see patients in the, in the office or in the clinic, you're going to let it ride it out for a little bit to see if the symptoms improve. Yeah. And then if they don't, are there any tests we can do to confirm or rule out whether or not there's a tear? Well, yeah, we, we do a full history, ask the questions, we do a physical examination. On examination, we do some maneuvers. First thing we do is point, with some, put some pressure on it with our finger, push right over that medial meniscus. Does this hurt? Yeah. Right? And then there's another one called the McMurray maneuver. That's a common one or McMurray test where we... Uh, put some pressure on and flex the knee, internally, externally rotate it as we bring it out into extension. And if we, we can sometimes actually feel a click or a clunk as the meniscus is flipping around in there. Patients do not love that no, test if they have no, a big tear. No. And ultimately we diagnose it with. So I would say first we start with an x-ray. An x-ray yeah. is usually normal. I suspect Zion's uh, x-rays are totally normal. Yeah. He's young. He had the odds of having significant arthritis is very low. Yeah. Um, but usually we head to an MRI. An ultrasound does not provide a lot. And he, I can almost guarantee that he had an MRI that showed that he had a tear yeah. consistent with his location and story and his symptoms. Okay, so here we are, professional athlete. Yeah medial meniscal tear. We're yep. assuming it's medial. Medial side is most commonly torn. Yeah. We don't know if it's medial, la medial, medial or lateral. Let's assume it was the medial, it's I would, the most common one. I would guess. Uh, so you've got this, what do you, how, do we, how do we treat it now? So in the average person, if they had mild symptoms, you might try some physiotherapy, yeah. medication, activity yeah. modification, um, and then see what happens. And if it doesn't get better, then there are surgical options. Yeah, like so by average person, Dr. Weening means the vast majority of us would start with a non-operative treatment plan. Yes, not a generational player, maybe the best player since LeBron to kind of come in as a rookie. Yeah. So he probably doesn't get the average treatment in there, motivated to increase his chances of long-term success, as well as get him back to work as yeah. fast as they can. Yeah, get um, back on the court. Okay, so what? So he's gonna get treated operatively, which yes. he did already. Yes. What do you think happened at the, in the surgery, what surgery did he have? Right, so we don't have specific access to his OR node or details of that effect, but he did have arthroscopy, which means he either went to sleep or had a spinal anesthetic to freeze his lower body, and then we make two, sometimes three little holes in and around the knee um, to first take a look, 
find the problem, and then deal with it. If you're really interested, check out our video. We do show the OR, we do show a, a knee arthroscopy happening, and we show you what it looks like inside the knee. Right, okay. so, so when they got in there, my guess is that the ends of the bones probably looked pretty normal. So the cartilage surface, yeah. Right, so he did not have any significant arthritis. They would look at his anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, which are visible inside. The MCL and LCL you can't really see. And then the main goal would be to look at the medial and lateral meniscus. Okay. And I suspect the lateral meniscus was totally normal and the medial meniscus had a tear. Okay, we're gonna have to erase this video if he has a lateral meniscal tear, but I'm hoping, he had a me I'm, I'm hoping he's good, but if he did have something, it's the medial meniscus. So he's got a medial meniscal, medial meniscal tear and we're gonna deal with this one of two ways. Okay. Either we're going to excise the torn portion of it. Yep. Or we're gonna try and repair the meniscus. Right. Two vastly different operations. Totally agree. Um, what does your gut say, Paul, when the report says that he's out for six to eight weeks? Do you think he had an excision or a repair? I think he had an excision, an uh, excision, a partial medial manisectomy, which means they took out part of the meniscus. I would agree, because typically if you had it repaired, you have to protect the weight bearing for six to eight weeks and then rehab, so it'd be a much longer recovery. Right. Um, so, so why do we sometimes de debride it or perform a manisectomy and why do we sometimes repair it? So I would say there are three main factors for me. So one would be the location. Location, location, location. It's like real estate. Uh, number two would be the age of the patient. Age, 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 age. So it's like real estate. So the <laughs> old house, new house. The older you are, the, the lower the chances that it could be, could be fixed or repaired. And I, for me also the chronicity of the injury. So if the injury happened three years ago, that also has a lower chance of being able to be repaired. Nothing like real estate. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, and really, yeah, the location is important because the, the meniscus does not have a good blood supply. It gets most of its nutrients from the synovial fluid or yep. the joint fluid. But at the very periphery, it has a good blood supply. So if it's torn at the periphery, yes. you can fix it because you need a good blood supply for something to heal. And sometimes those large bucket handle tears in the younger people, sometimes those are the ones that you can reduce or put back where it is and then tack it in place with either a suture yeah. or an anchor of okay. some sort. Okay. So now we're making some assumptions. We assume it was the medial side and we assume he had a partial medial yeah. mastectomy. So part of it, ectomy means we removed part of it. Yes. Okay. And so for me, uh, one of the analogies you can see in the other video, it, it almost looks like a hangnail. There's a little piece that's kind of hanging there. So you, you trim away the part that's torn. How do you know how much to remove as a surgeon? Well, we always try and remove it back down to a stable cartilage. So we take it back until the remaining meniscus is stable and won't flip and flop out in and outside of the joint. Right, and the main goal being that now something's not gonna get pinched anymore. It's not gonna, get, it's not gonna be clicking or catching to reduce this pain. Um, now that, now that we're done that part, part how, how, uh, what happens afterwards? Well, he's going to get some physiotherapy, yep. some aggressive rehabilitation, because the whole goal is going to be to get him back on the basketball court. And yeah, six to eight weeks is, is probably a noble goal, but I this is so. a guy who's motivated, he's an elite athlete. Um, yeah. Does this mean that he's going to be totally normal for the rest of his career? Okay, well, you, you know, compared to other injuries, I think he could come back and I don't think, I think this is going to be a blip. It's not going to yeah. change the direction or change the duration of his career. I really don't think so. For example, if he'd had an ACL injury. Like Clay Thompson. Well, that could have done it, right? There you go. Case in point. If he'd had a fracture, that could have taken a little longer. Or an Achilles tendon. Or an Achilles Kevin Durant. tendon. Moving away from the knee. Yeah, that, but yeah, the Achilles tendon. Some, one of those type of injuries, that's going to change the course of your career. I think that has a higher chance of changing the course of your career. Yeah. A meniscal tear that's dealt with in an expert fashion, arthroscopically. I don't think it's gonna really, it's a blip, I don't think it's gonna change. I think your fantasy teams are still gonna be okay. Yes, delayed a little bit. Yeah. Um, can you re-tear it? Oh yeah, yeah, you can re-tear, you can re-injure that, you can tear, you can tear the lateral meniscus, you can do the same thing on the other knee, uh, maybe. Um, yeah. It can happen, it can happen. Hopefully you just see as an uh, uncomplicated course, gets back to it and we get to see everything that we've been waiting for all summer. Right, now here's a fun fact. What if this had happened, let's say 30 years ago? So 30 years ago. Tear your meniscus 30 years ago. Yeah, so if you failed non-operative treatment, usually you would get an incision on the side where yeah. the tear was. You'd probably be hearing this on the radio because there was no internet. <laughs> you probably won't get an MRI. Yeah. You'd have a big cut and then they would actually remove the entire right. thing. You do a complete meniscectomy. So yeah. they do a big incision, big incision, like, you know, five centimeters to two and a half inches, something like that. Five days in hospital, often a cast for three yeah. months. Like it was wild. And you took out the whole meniscus. Yeah. And what happens if you remove the whole meniscus? You get arthritis, 
Eight to ten years yeah, later. Yeah, eight to ten years later, you get arthritis. And we know that because we replace knees and we see people who've had their meniscus removed the old fashioned way, hockey goalies yep. often. Uh, and you see that telltale scar on the medial side of the knee, like that, uh, you had your whole meniscus removed, yeah. and that's why you're getting arthritis at a younger age. Although those people who had that now are getting up in age, because we haven't been taking out the entire meniscus for many years now. That's right. When I say we, I never did. This was before my time. No. Nope. Because I'm so young. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And best of luck, Zion. We can't wait to watch you play. We really hope you have a speedy recovery, and we're rooting for you. We'll see you next time.